Hey everyone, Sharkheart here, and in this video I want to go over how to build every single character in Genjin Impact up to patch 2.6. I'm going to be going over what to focus on in these various builds from their weapons, talents, artifact sets, and what priority you want to level them in. Keep in mind there are currently 47 playable characters in Genshin Impact, so there's quite a lot to cover here, so I'm just been giving you a little snippet here and there. Don't think of this as a strict prescriptive guide that you absolutely have to follow. Think of this as a good starting point to kind of understand what the characters do and then how to build around them. You can obviously substitute different artifact sets, especially as more come out, but just know certain characters do certain things and so you should build them in a certain way to be the most effective and efficient. With that in mind, I wanted to give you a good overview of how these characters should be built. This video took a lot of time and effort, so if you wouldn't mind, please placing your fin on that like and sub button. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much friends, and let's dive in. Kamisato Ayato. For Ayato, you want to focus on either a 4-piece Heart of Depth set or a 4-piece Echoes of an Offering set, and you can also do a 4-piece Gladiator set. You can also mix and match and do Echoes of an Offering, Gladiator, and Heart of Depth, just whichever one gives you the best substats. For weapons, you can give him the Black Cliff Longsword, the Black Sword, which is the Battle Pass weapon, or just about any 5-star weapon works as well. If you want to run him in an Electro Charge team, the Lion's Roar is also a good choice. Focus on leveling his elemental skill first, then his elemental burst, and then his normal attacks. Yai Miko. You build Yai Miko like a sub DPS, meaning that you use either 2 piece Thundering Fury, 2 piece Noblesse, or a 4 piece Emblem of the Severed Fate for her. Like most DPS characters, you're going to want to focus on a crit rate or damage headpiece, whichever one you need more of, an electro damage goblet, and an attack sands. For her weapon, either use a Widsith or any 5-star Catalyst if you have one. Focus on Yaimiko's elemental skill and burst, and if you plan to use her as a main DPS on the field, then you can level her normal attacks, but if you don't plan on doing that, you can forget leveling the normal attacks altogether. Shenha! Build Shenha with your highest base damage spear and as much attack as possible. She's kind of a niche support, and it's completely fine to do a triple attack set on her with an attack headpiece, attack goblet, and attack sands. The more attack she has, the more quill damage it will give your team. You can put a few different artifacts set on her, from Blizzard Strayer if you want the extra crit, but most likely you're either going to do a 4-piece Noblesse or a mix set of 2-piece Gladiator, Shimanawa, both of an offering, or Vermillion Hereafter for the 2-piece 18% attack. Focus on leveling Shen He's elemental skill and burst. You don't need to level her normal attacks unless you plan to use her as a carry, even though she's not really designed to be that. Yunjin. Yunjin is a defensive support character who really benefits from a lot of defense scaling, so the four-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams is a great choice for her. You want to build her focusing on defense, and as she doesn't do a whole lot of damage herself, it's probably fine if you give her a defense headpiece, defense goblet, and a defense sands. For weapons, the Favonia Spear is a good option because it helps recharge energy for your entire team, and because Yunjin's personal damage isn't very high, that gives her a bit of utility. Focus on leveling Yunjin's burst, and then potentially leveling her skill as well, and you can skip out on leveling her normal attacks. Arataki Ito. Arataki Ito is a defense scaling hyper carry, and as such you build him the same as other DPS and hyper carries, the only difference is you give him a defense sands rather than an attack sands. So you want to build him with the crit rate or damage circlet, whichever one you need more of, a geo damage goblet, a defense sands, and use the four piece husk of opulent dream set on him. For weapons, the White Blind is a great choice, and other 5-star Claymores will work as well. Level up Ito's Elemental Skill, Burst, and Normal Attacks, and focus on his Normal Attacks first, then his Burst, then his Elemental Skill, because most of his damage is coming from Charge Attacks. Goro. Goro is all about enhancing Geo characters' damage when they scale off defense, so Ito, Goro, and Noel. You can build Goro on the Husk of Opulent Dreams 4-piece set, but it's actually better to run him on the 4-piece Exile, which is a 4-star set. The Exile set helps regenerate energy for a team whenever Goro uses his own elemental burst and gives him a bunch of energy recharge. 
you're probably going to want to focus on this for him, even though he does scale off defense, his damage really isn't that good. So build him with a lot of energy recharge, give him the Favonius Warbow, and call it a day. For Goro, you can focus on leveling up his elemental skill and burst, but they don't need to be that high, they just need to be high enough to give bonuses to those defense scaling Geo characters. Toma! You can try to build Toma for damage, but he doesn't really work very well that way. Instead, it's best to build him with a lot of HP and energy recharge. Give him a Favonius Spear, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Tenacity, an energy recharge Sands, and an HP Circlet and Goblet. This will make Toma very tanky. Since his own personal damage is unfortunately pretty low, this is probably the best way to build Toma. Focus on leveling Toma's elemental skill and burst. You can completely ignore his normal attacks because his main utility is as a shielder, and so you'll want both his skill and burst leveled up to take advantage of that shield. Sanganomiya Kokomi. For Kokomi, you want to focus on building her with HP, healing bonus, and attack percent, as she cannot crit, so you don't need to build her with any crit at all. In fact, it's often best to build her as a support without having her on the field for a lot of time, but you can have her as a main carry as well. For her weapons, you either want to give her a Prototype Amber, which is a craftable 4-star weapon, or the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, so she can support your team. But if you want to keep her as a on-field main carry, you can also put a 5-star weapon on her too. As far as talents go, her Jellyfish is the most important, and then you can also level up her auto attacks and her elemental burst if you plan to use her as a main on-field carry, and if you don't plan on doing that, you don't really need to level those up either. For the artifact set, you want to run a 4-piece Ocean Hued Clam to get that extra healing bonus damage, which can be pretty strong. For the headpiece, you want to run healing bonus or HP if you don't have a good healing bonus set. Goblet, you would want to run Hydro Damage or HP, and Sans definitely HP. The Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun is one of those characters who kind of wants just about everything. Attack, crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge. Though out of these, energy recharge is the most important stat. For her weapons, if you have the Skyward Spine, you can equip that on her. However, if you don't have that or the Engulfing Lightning, her 4-star weapon, the Catch, is one of the best that you can have. It's also free, and you can refine it to Refine 5 for free as well. For her talents, you can completely ignore her auto attacks, focus on her skill and her burst, leveling up her burst first, and then making her skill second priority. For the artifact sets, there's only one. You want a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate. And as far as which artifacts to get for the head, you want to focus on crit rate or damage, whatever you need more of. For goblets, if you're using the catch, you can run an attack percent goblet. For the sands, you want to run an energy recharge sands, unless your energy recharge is sufficient where you don't need it, and then you can run an attack percent sands. Similarly to the goblet, you can run either an electro damage percent goblet or an attack percent goblet. If you use the catch, it's generally better to run an attack percent goblet but if you use something like the Engulfing Lightning, it's generally better to run an Electro Damage Percent Goblet. Kujo Sara. Kujo Sara is an Electro Buffing character, and she focuses on Elemental Damage Buffing for specifically Electro characters. You could run her either with a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set, a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, or a mix set between something like 2-piece Thundering Fury and 2-piece Noblesse or Emblem of the Severed Fate. For weapons, you either want to give her the weapon with the highest base attack you have, or a weapon that grants her more energy like the Favonius Warbow as a good choice. You generally want to build her like a support DPS with either a crit rate damage or crit rate or damage circlet, an electro goblet, and an energy recharge sands. Aloy! Don't build Aloy. But if you really want to build Aloy, just build her like a DPS, crit rate or crit damage on the circlet. 4-piece Blizzard Strayer set will always go well with her, attack sands, and elemental damage goblet. Though, to be honest, she's a pretty underwhelming character and you get more mileage out of someone like Kaya. Yoimiya! Yoimiya focuses on normal attack, and so you want to focus on that with her build. For the weapon, you want to focus on something like the Rust, which increases normal attack damage. As far as her talents, 
You want to level all of them, but the elemental burst is not as important as her skill and her normal attacks. For her artifact set, the 4-piece Shiminawa does work pretty well on her, as well as the 4-piece Echoes of an Offering, a new artifact set that came out that increases normal attack damage at a certain percentage. Like most on-field damage dealers, you want to focus on having a crit rate or damage circlet, whichever one you need more of, a pyro damage goblet, and an attack sands. Sayu! Sayu is an animo support healer that can be built a couple different ways but you want to focus on energy recharge and elemental mastery. A good thing to do with Sayu is to put her on a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set. Every single Animo character will want this, and it's good for Sayu as well. Focus on giving her elemental mastery and plenty of energy recharge so that she can use her burst off cooldown. As far as her weapon, you can use a 3-star weapon. I believe it's called the Bloodstained Greatsword, which gives her elemental mastery. However, a weapon like the Favonius Greatsword for uh, energy recharge is also very good. For talents, her auto attacks don't really matter. Her skill is okay, but you really want to focus on her elemental burst. For head, you can use attack percent if you really want to because her, her heal does scale with her attack. Goblet, you can use elemental mastery, sans elemental mastery as well. And if you are lucky enough to get an elemental mastery in the headpiece, you can use that too. However, if you can't and are just completely bored of farming the Viridescent Veneer set, attack percent in any of those three categories will suffice. And if you need more energy recharge, you could always put that in her sands as well. Nato Ayaka. Ayaka is mostly an on-field carry but can be a very strong support DPS, and so you'll build her like you do most characters in that category, meaning a crit rate or damage circlet, though with Ayaka you're almost always going to want a crit damage circlet, as well as an attack percent sands, and a cryo damage goblet. For her artifacts, you're going to want to do a four-piece blizzard strayer to give her the crazy amount of crit rate, and for weapons, black cliff longsword is a great option for her, though if you want you could run the black sword or a few other options like the Aminome Kageuchi, which is a 4-star craftable weapon. You could also build her with an attack percent circlet, which is a pretty good option if you have plenty of crit damage already. Basically, Ayaka wants as much crit damage and attack as possible. She doesn't need as much crit because the Blizzard Strayer plus Cryo Resonance will give her a ton already. For Ayaka, you want to focus on leveling her Elemental Burst first, then her Elemental Skill as those will do the most damage, and then you can focus on leveling her Auto Attacks and Normal Attacks because her Charge Attacks do quite a bit of damage as well. Kaidehara Kazuha So, Kazuha is a character that many many people like, but I think some people kind of build him incorrectly or wrong. Some people build Kazuha as a DPS, and he can do that, but really you want to build Kazuha with as much elemental mastery as possible on the condition that you can use his elemental burst off cooldown. So, using something like a Sacrificial Sword or a Favonius Sword is really good on Kazuha, and if you have enough energy recharge to use his elemental burst off cooldown, then you can switch to something like an Iron Sting. For his artifact sets, you want to run a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer, like pretty much all other Anemo characters, and focus on Elemental Mastery as the main stat, as well as all the substats when you can get them. So you want Elemental Mastery on the headpiece, goblet, and sands, as well as on any substats on the other pieces if you can. For talents, you don't need to level his normal attacks, just focus on his Elemental Skill and Burst. Eula Lawrence. For Eula, it's all about building physical damage with as much crit rate and damage as possible to hit those big numbers. For her weapon, give her whatever the highest base attack claymore you have is, whether that's a Snow Tomb Star Silver, Prototype uh, Archaic, or any of the 5 star weapons will work on her as well. For her talents, you want to level up basically everything, but her burst is the most important, and then I would do her normal attacks, and then her skill. Her artifacts, you can either do a two-piece Bloodstained or a two-piece Pale Flame for the 50% physical damage bonus, or a four-piece Pale Flame. For head, you want to run either crit rate or damage, whichever one you need. 
Goblet physical damage and Sans attack percent. Yanfei. There's basically a couple ways to build Yanfei. You can build her as a DPS, which is a little bit underwhelming, or you can build her as a support tank, aka shield or tank fei. For her DPS build, you want to focus on giving her a DPS catalyst like the Wood Sith or something like that. For her talents, you want to focus on her auto attacks and her elemental burst and her skill, it's okay, but mostly her auto attacks will be your priority because you'll be doing charge attacks with her. For her artifact set, you either want to focus on the Shiminawa set or the four piece Wanderer set, four piece of either, and the headpiece you want crit rate or damage, a pyro damage goblet, and an attack percent sands. For Tank Fei, it's all about building as much HP on her as possible, and this build only works at Constellation 4. So if you have Constellation 4 and want to try out someone who can give you a crazy shield, Tank Fei is kind of interesting. For this build, you want to give her a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer or Prototype Crescent. Either one will work, as both provide HP percentage, and one allows for more healing and energy regeneration, while the other one allows you to switch off of her and give a huge attack buff to whoever you switch into. The talents for Tank Fei do not matter at all. The artifact sets you want to run on her are a two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith for the extra 20% HP, and a two-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate for an extra 20% energy recharge. For Head and Goblet, you want to run HP% percent and Sands, you can either run HP% percent Sands or an Energy Recharge Sands just to make sure that you can use her Burst as much as you can. Rosaria. Rosaria is often best built as a sub DPS, though you can build her physical. I'll give you the sub DPS build. If you run, want to run her physical, just replace the cryo damage cup with a physical damage cup. So her build should focus on attack and crit damage, as she can run the four piece blizzard strayer, which will give her a lot of crit rates. There's also another build, you can use Lava Walkers on her in a Reverse Melt Team, though that's a little more specific so I'll give you a good general build. The weapon you want to run on her is something with either crit rate, damage, or energy recharge, so something like a Deathmatch, a Favonius Lance, or even a Dragon's Bane in certain circumstances will work very well on her. If you want to run the physical build, then you can run the Dragon Spine Craftable Spear on her as well. As far as her talents, if you use her as an on-field carry, Level up her normal attacks, but if you don't use her on field for more than a couple seconds, don't level those up at all. Instead, focus on her elemental skill and burst, prioritizing her burst and then her skill. For the artifact sets, you want to run a four-piece blizzard strayer on her in almost all scenarios. This is because it will give her a massive amount of crit rate and allow you to build more crit damage. So for her circlet, build either crit rate or damage, whichever one you need, though likely it's going to be crit damage. Goblet, you want to build cryo damage, and for sands, attack percent. Hu Tao. Hu Tao is all about building as much HP as possible. The more HP you have, the more damage you do. So the weapons you can use for Hu Tao, you can actually use a 3 star weapon, the Black Tassels, because it gives you HP percent and crit and is pretty good on Hu Tao but you can also run her with a Dragon's Bane or a Black Cliff Spear. Those are both good options. And of course, the Staff of Homa is amazing for her. As far as talents, you want to level everything up, but you want to prioritize your elemental skill, and then your normal attacks, and then your elemental burst. For her artifact set, the four-piece Crimson Witch will work well on her, but if you don't want to farm a four-piece Crimson Witch, you can do two-piece Crimson Witch and two-piece Tenacity until you farm the four-piece. For her head, you want to run crit rate or damage, whichever one you need. Goblet, you want to run pyro damage percent. And sand, you want to run HP percent. Zhao. The Vigilant Yaksha himself focuses on the best substats that you can get. So that means as much attack, crit rate, and crit damage as possible. For weapons, he doesn't have too many free to play options. The Black Cliff Pole is probably his best one, but you really want to run him with something like the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, or another 5-star weapon. As far as talents, you're going to want to level all of them, but you'll focus on your Elemental Burst and your Normal Attacks first, and then your Elemental Skill. 
the artifact sets, he actually has quite a few options. You can run him with two-piece Viridescent Veneer for the extra 15% Anemo damage bonus, or what would be a little bit easier and potentially better would be the two-piece Gladiator, two-piece Shiminawa, two-piece Echoes of an Offering, or two-piece Vermilion Hereafter, basically two-piece 18% attack bonus artifacts. You could also run him with a four-piece Vermilion Hereafter, but if you already have two pieces of Gladiator, Shiminawa, Echoes of an Offering, or another set that's really good, just use those because Zhao wants good substats, doesn't care about set bonuses that much. For the artifacts specifically, for the headpiece you want to run either crit rate or damage, whatever you need more of. Goblet, you'll run a 1, Anemo damage percent, and Sans attack percent. Ganyu! There's a couple different builds with Ganyu, you can either run her Melt or Freeze, and both builds are viable, it just depends on how you want to play them. With Melt Ganyu, you definitely need a shield like Zhongli, otherwise it's not really advised to play Melt Ganyu, but Freeze Ganyu is much easier and generally easier to build as well. So you want to focus on a lot of crit damage for her as well as attack and some crit rate, just like other on-field carries. For her weapon, the Prototype Crescent that you can craft is a really good weapon for both charge attack and for Freeze Ganyu but you can always use a 5-star weapon like the Amos Bow or Skyward Harp as well. For talents, you want to focus on her elemental skill and burst secondary to her normal attacks. Her charge attacks do a ton of damage, but if you're going to use her in equip swap variants, then you want to focus on her burst first, then her charge attacks, then her elemental skill. For the artifact sets, you can either run her in one of two options, a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer or a 4-piece Wanderers or Shiminawa set. The four-piece Blizzard Strayer is for Freeze Ganyu to give her a ton of crit rate, and you want to focus on crit damage, cryo damage, and attack percent on the sands. For the Wanderers or Shiminawa, that's for Melt Ganyu, and you want to focus on crit rate or damage. For the Goblet, you want to focus on cryo percent damage, and for the sands, you want to focus on either attack percent or elemental mastery if you have a good elemental mastery sands it will actually do more than attack percent but it's a lot harder to farm albedo albedo is a character that is focused entirely on defense so you want to give him as much defense as possible so for his weapon you could either use the special event weapon that increases his defense but if you don't have that, the three-star weapon, the Harbinger of Dawn, will also work quite well on him as you basically switch him in, use E, maybe use Q, and then switch out. He's almost never out of time. So if you're missing the Sinner Bar Spindle, just use that three-star weapon as it will work pretty well on him. For his talents, you want to focus on leveling his elemental skill first, then his elemental burst, and you can completely ignore his normal attacks. For the artifacts, you definitely want to use the four-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams as it gives him both defense percent and geo damage, and for his headpiece, depending on how you're building him, you could build him with crit rate or damage if you have enough of one or the either, or potentially defense percent if you have a really good defense percent headpiece as well. Goblet, you want to focus on geo damage, and Sands, you want to focus on defense percent. Zhongli. There's a couple ways to build this guy, but mostly you want to focus on HP to get that big juicy shield. For weapons, you can use him as a variety of different weapons, whether you want him a sub DPS or shield bot, but you can use something like Black Tassels to increase his shield, or you can use more DPS focused weapons if you want him as a sub DPS because his meteor does hit good numbers. Though I recommend most people build him as a shield bot as that's very easy. For talents, you want to level up his shield and his burst, so his skill and his elemental burst first. And you can skip on his normal attacks entirely, as they don't really contribute too much, and the scaling's pretty low. For the artifact sets, he has a lot of different artifacts that he can run. Either a two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith with two-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, or two-piece Archaic Petra, or two-piece this, two-piece that, two-piece Gladiators, two-piece Echoes of an Offering, or a four-piece Tenacity of the Millilith. Basically, Zhongli's got a lot of options, but giving him more HP is always a good thing. For his headpiece, you could run him with crit rate or crit damage or more HP, Goblet. You could run him with Geo damage or more HP if you want him to be more shield-oriented rather than damage-oriented. And Sans again, either more HP 
or attack percent if you want them to be a sub DPS, though some combination of any of those with whatever subsets you have best is probably the way to go. Jin Yan. Jin Yan is a pyro DPS that actually focuses on physical damage and shielding. She is defense scaling and thus you want to build her with defense. For her weapon, typically you want to build her with a physical damage weapon or just any strong 5 star or 4 star weapon you have. For her talents, you want to level her normal charged normal attacks, her elemental skill, and her elemental burst, but typically depending on which role you're going to use her in, you typically want to level her normal attacks first as her skill and burst are kind of lackluster but do find their place. For the artifact set, you could run a two-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams and two-piece of the Bloodstained, or you could run two-piece Bloodstained, two-piece Pale Flame. You've got a, a couple different options with her. Just know that Jinyan is generally not used very often because she's lackluster and she's been unfortunately neglected by MiHoYo and is still bugged <laughs> from way back when she was released. For her headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, whichever one you need. Goblet physical damage percent and sands defense percent. Tartaglia. For Tartaglia, you want to focus on building him as an on field carry, even though he's only going to be on the field for about 6 seconds at a time. For the weapons, you can guild, build him with just about any 5 star bow, and the 4 star weapon, the Rust, is really good for him as well. For talents, you want to focus on his elemental skill and his elemental burst. You don't really need to level his normal attacks because that's only going to affect the, the bow shots that he does, not the normal attacks that he does in his elemental skill state. Those are completely different. For the artifact set, you want to run him with a 4-piece Heart of Depth so he can get that damage bonus for not only Hydro, but on the normal attacks while he's in his elemental skill stance. You want to run him with crit rate or damage on the headpiece, hydro damage goblet, and an attack percent sands. Diona! Diona can be built in a variety of ways, but basically you want to give her enough energy recharge that she can use her burst whenever she needs to, and then focus the rest of her build on HP to give you a stronger shield. For weapons, you can either use a sacrificial bow or a Favonius war bow. The idea here is that she will have more energy recharge and can give your team more energy. For talents, you want to focus on her shield first, then her elemental burst for healing, and you don't need to touch her normal attacks because she's not a DPS character, she's 100% utility and support. For her artifact set, you either want to run her as a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set, that way she can buff your team by giving them an extra 20% attack, or some sort of combination between Emblem of the Severed Fate for more energy recharge and Tenacity of the Millwith for more HP or potentially more healing bonus if that's what you find you need as well. So either 4-piece Noblesse Oblige or 2-piece HP, 2-piece healing bonus, 2-piece HP, 2-piece energy recharge or energy recharge healing bonus, whichever one best suits you. For the headpiece, I recommend using HP over healing bonus as it will increase the durability of her shields, goblet HP, and sands either energy recharge or HP, whichever one you need more of. Klee! For Klee, you want to give her a DPS catalyst like the Wood Sith or the Mopamare. She also does well with 5 star catalysts too. For her talents, you want to focus on her normal attacks as she mostly does charge attack damage, and then level her skill and burst. For artifact sets, you either want to focus on the 4 piece Witch set or the 4 piece Wanderer's Troop set. Either one is good. If you can't get a good 4 piece of either one of those with good substats, then mix and match for a either 2 piece Witch set with 2 piece Gladiator or Sheminawa, something like that just to give her better substats. For the headpiece, you're going to want crit rate or damage. For the goblet, you'll want pyro damage. And for the sands, you want attack percent. Venti! everyone's favorite drunk bard. Venti focuses on elemental mastery, but you can also build him like a DPS as both work pretty well. So for a weapon, you want to give Venti either a bow that gives him energy recharge or elemental mastery or a bow like the Skyward Harp for more damage. Talents, completely ignore his auto attacks, focus on his elemental burst first and then his skill. 
for artifacts sets. No matter what you do, run him on a four-piece Viridescent Veneer set. It is incredibly good, and this and the this is one of the few times where the bonuses of the set outweigh the substats. Speaking of substats, you either want to run him with Triple Yem, so Elemental Mastery on the head, Goblet, and Sands, or Crit Raider damage on the head, Anemo damage on the Goblet, and an Attack Percent or Elemental Mastery Sands. Both options work, but farming Viridescent can be a giant pain, so kind of mix and match to see what you have. Venti scales very, very hard with Elemental Mastery, but he also does a lot of damage, so building him with crit and attack also works. Kaching. Kaching can be built physical or electro. For physical, you want to build a physical damage goblet with physical artifacts, but for the electro build, build her with a four piece thunder soother or two piece thundering fury, two piece gladiator, two piece noblesse, something like that. For weapons, just give her whatever weapon has the highest base attack and will affect her the most. Things like the Lion's Roar are good. You could potentially run the Amanoma Kageuchi, even though she doesn't really need the energy recharge that it provides, and the low base attack is not great on her. You could also run her with the Black Sword. The Jade Cutter is a great option. Just about any 5 star works on her as well. As for what to focus on, on the artifacts, look for crit rate or damage on the circlet, look for an electro or physical goblet depending on which way you want to run her, and an attack percent sands. Mona! You can build Mona as a DPS, though most of the time she's used as a thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer holder, and there's a couple different artifact sets that she can use, both of which are great. So the weapon, a thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer is perfectly fine on her. There are a few teams where she uses a prototype Amber and becomes a pseudo healer, or you can use a DPS Catalyst on her as well. For Talents, you want to focus on leveling her Burst first. Once her Elemental Burst is the highest level you can go, then you want to focus on her skill, and you can mostly ignore her auto attacks. For Artifacts, the 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate is incredibly good on her because she also scales Hydro Damage with Energy Recharge, so if she can double dip there, but if that's too much of a hassle, and if you're tired of farming the Emblem Domain and want something else, then 2-piece Heart of Depth, 2-piece Noblesse, or 2-piece Heart of Depth, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Noblesse, those all work. For her headpiece, you want to focus on crit rate or damage, the goblet you want hydro damage, and for the sands you want energy recharge. Chi Chi! Chi Chi isn't better with the introduction of the Ocean Hued Clam set. Chi Chi scales off attack, so you generally want a weapon that has high base attack. However, she also does well holding a weapon like the Favonius Sword to give your team more energy, as she does not generate any energy on her own unless you have Constellation 1. Talents for Chi Chi? You want to focus on her skill and burst. You can ignore her auto attacks as she does need to auto attack to proc her fortune preserver talisman, but she's not going to stay on the field for too long. Artifact sets for her. Generally the best one to run is the Ocean Hued Clam set as Chi Chi heals an incredible amount and can take advantage of the maximum bonus it can give. For head you want to run crit rate, crit damage, or attack percent, goblet, I would suggest running attack percent here as well, and sands probably energy recharge or attack percent. Deluke. Deluke is an on-field hyper carry, and thus you build him as that, so you want crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, elemental damage on the goblet, and an attack percent sands. For a weapon, just give him whatever the highest base attack weapon you have is, whether that's a crafted weapon like the prototype archaic, or a skyward pride, or any other 5 star weapon. For his talents, you want to focus on his skill, then his normal attacks, then his elemental burst. For his artifact sets, the best one for him is the 4-piece Crimson Witch. It was tailor-made for Deluke, and it's easily his best artifact set. Next on the list is Jean. For Jean, you want to build her as sort of a pseudo-healer DPS kind of hybrid. 
for her weapon. You can use a variety of weapons though. The Amanoga Kageuchi is a really good choice for her because she can proc its passive pretty, pretty well. For her talents, you want to level her skill and burst. And if you're early in the game, you can level her auto attacks as well. She can be a carry that also heals the rest of your team, which is very, very useful early in the game. For her artifact sets, you can use some combination of the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer or 2-piece Viridescent with 2-piece Gladiator or some combination thereof. Jean mostly wants a bunch of substats and energy recharge to use her burst off cooldown. So just focus on that and don't get too hung up on what set bonus you're going for. For her headpiece, you want crit rate or damage, goblets, you want a Nemo damage bonus, and Sands, you want either attack percent or energy recharge if you're not able to keep her burst up often enough. Sucrose. Sucrose is incredibly easy to build because she really only needs two things, that's level and an artifact set. For her weapon, give her the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers or the Sacrificial Fragments as it has Elemental Mastery, which is the only stat she cares about. For her talents, you can honestly keep them all at level 1. Her damage does not come from the talents, they come from the swirls. And she can auto attack and swirl every couple hits on her auto attacks. So if you don't want to level her talents, spend the more and resources, you do not have to and she will still be really good. Artifact sets, you want to run a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set on her, no question, no other set but the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer, and you have to focus on Elemental Mastery on every single piece. This will make it a little bit tough, because you'll need Elemental Mastery main stat on the head, Goblet, and Sands, as well as, hopefully, Elemental Mastery on a few substats of other pieces too. The next thing you want to do with Sucrose is take her to level 90, or as high level as you can once you have the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set on her because Swirl is affected by enemies level in addition to your level. So the higher level you have, the more your Swirl damage will do. Chung Yoon! Chung Yoon can be built in a few different ways but typically functions best as a burst support. So you could build him with a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer if you wanted, but I think it's better to build him as more burst heavy. So I like to build Chang Yun with a weapon like the Favonius Greatsword, that way he can refund energy to his team. For his talents, you want to focus on his elemental skill and his elemental burst. His auto attacks are not very good, so you don't need to level those. For his artifact set, you can run him Blizzard Strayer because he is a cryo character and can take advantage of that. Though I also like to run him on the Noblesse Bleach set to give your team a nice 20% attack buff when he uses his elemental burst. For the headpiece, you want to focus on crit rate or damage, goblet cryo damage, and sands, you want to focus on attack percent. Typically for sub DPSs, you would focus on energy recharge, but his energy cost is only 40, and his skill generates a lot of particles, so he usually won't have that much trouble keeping his burst up. Noel, another geo damage scaling character that focuses on defense. So you want to build her with defense in mind, for her weapon, there's a variety of weapons that will work for her, but the White Blind, the craftable 4-star weapon, is tailor-made for her. Also, the Serpent Spine, the Battle Pass Claymore, is very, very good. A few 5-star Claymores will work on her as well. Skyward Pride is nice for the extra energy recharge, and other ones with higher base attack are also nice, like the Red Horn Stone Thresher. For talents, you want to focus on her elemental burst first, and then her normal attacks, and then her elemental skill. Most of her damage is going to come from her burst, and her normal attacks in her burst, so that's why you want to focus on those two first. As far as artifacts go, you can run her either on the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams, the 4-piece Gladiator, or 4-piece Archaic Petra. Any of those will work. Or a 4-piece Retracing Bolide is a potential option as well, though the uptime on that is not great. If you are going to farm any artifacts, I suggest farming the Husk of Opulent Dreams, the new Geo set that gives you defense percent, as it'll be the best farmable option on her. For her headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, Goblet, you want to run, want to run Geo damage, and Sands, you want to run defense percent. Bennett! 
One of the most broken characters in the game is actually pretty easy to build as well. For weapons, you want to give him a weapon with the highest base attack possible, as that will give you more attack for your team when he does his elemental burst. But barring a weapon that is really high base attack, just give him a weapon that has energy recharge on it like the Vivonia Sword or Festering Desire if you have it. For talents, you want to focus on his elemental burst first, then his elemental skill. You don't need to level his auto attacks if you don't plan to use him as a carry, which he does have the potential to be, but focus on his burst first no matter what, then his elemental skill. For artifact sets, you could run Bennett on a 4-piece Crimson Witch if you want him to be a main DPS or carry. You could also mix and match with 2-piece Crimson, 2-piece Noblesse, 2-piece Emblem. He's got a lot of options. Most people though run him on a 4-piece Noblesse to give your team an extra 20% attack bonus whenever he uses his elemental burst. But I personally run Bennett on a 4-piece Thundering Fury so I can use his E every single second because I run Bennett with Raiden. That's a more specific build though. For his headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, goblet you want to run pyro damage, and sands you want to use energy recharge. Fischl! Fischl is an incredibly easy character to build because she doesn't care about any set bonuses, she just wants raw stats. Give her the most crit, crit damage, and attack percent as you can. For her weapon, give her any weapon that is really offensive in mind. She doesn't need a lot of energy recharge as Oz generates a lot of particles. So, give her something like the Viridescent Hunt or the Stringless, both really good options for her. For her talents, you want to level Oz as high as you can, aka her elemental skill, and then you can level her elemental burst a little bit, but you honestly don't even need to do that as Oz is the main thing there, and the elemental burst only counts when it initially comes out, and then when it places Oz it uses that skill, so make sure to level Oz first and foremost. If you want to leave the other talents at level 1, that's fine. For artifact sets, again, she doesn't need any specific one, but you could run 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Glad, something like that on her. Just again, go for the best substats. So you want to run a headpiece with crit rate or damage, and then the best substats, like the best offensive attack percent, crit rate or damage, the opposite of whatever you have on your headpiece, elemental mastery and energy recharge. Goblet, you want to run Electro damage percentage with the best subsets you can, and Sans attack percent with the best subsets you can. Again, sets on Fischl do not matter. Ningguang. Ningguang can run a few different sets, but generally you want to focus on building her as either a main DPS or a sub DPS. In either case, you want to run her with a high damaging catalyst, whether that's something like the Dodoko Tails or Widsith. And then for her talents, you want to focus on her normal attacks, her charge attacks, or her burst depending on how you plan to play her. If you're going to play Ningguang as a burst support, you want to focus on her elemental burst first, and then her elemental skill, and then her charge attacks and normal attacks. The reason you focus on her normal and charge attacks is because if you have a C6 Ningguang, you can use her Star Jades immediately after using her elemental burst. But, if you don't have a C6 Ningguang, you can actually not focus on those at all and just use her elemental burst and skill. If you're going to use her as an on-field main carry, then you want to focus on her normal and charge attacks first, then her burst, then her skill, and she gets a lot of damage from her charge attacks. For artifact sets, generally Ningguang wants to run whatever the best subsets are. A 4-piece set usually isn't the best on her. Typically things that are better will be something like a two-piece Gladiator, two-piece Archaic, or two-piece Petra. For artifact sets, you want to run Ningguang with a Geo Damage Percent or Attack Percent, and just give her whatever has the best substats. So if that's a two-piece Gladiators and two-piece Shiminawa, then you can use that. However, she can also use a four-piece Shiminawa in the event that she does get a lot of energy back and you can usually funnel her burst pretty easily, but I would not use a 4-piece shimmy now on her if you don't plan to use her as a main carry. For the headpiece, you want to use crit rate or damage, goblet you want to use geo percent, and sands you want to use attack percent. Jingcho! Our favorite water boy 
has a couple different variations to his build, but generally you want to give him a lot of energy recharge and you want to focus on making his elemental burst do as much damage as it can. Because he has such a long cooldown on his E, a lot of people run the Sacrificial Sword on him and that's a great option, but you can also run the Favonius if you don't have the Sacrificial, and if you don't have either, you could potentially run something like the Lion's Roar as well, though that is more specified for an Electro team or a Pyro team. So this works very well in Ride and Overvape, though most people will elect to run a Favonius Sword or a Sacrificial Sword on him. For his talents, you want to focus on his Elemental Burst first, then his Elemental Skill, and you could ignore his normal attacks. For his Artifact Sets, he's got a couple options. You can either run a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate. Surprise, surprise, another character that wants 4-piece Emblem. But he can take advantage of it because he needs high energy recharge already, and the Emblem damage will help him significantly on his Elemental Burst. If you don't want to farm a 4-piece emblem or don't have a good 4-piece emblem, then give him a 2-piece Heart of Depth and 2-piece No Bless or 2-piece Heart of Depth, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece No Bless, any combination of those will work. For his headpiece, you want to run him with crit rate or damage, goblet, you want to run him with hydro damage percent, and sands, you want to run him with energy recharge, unless you're above about 230% and then an attack percent sands would be fine on him too. Beto. Beto is a sub DPS that, you guessed it, loves the Emblem of the Severed Fate. For her weapon, give her a DPS oriented claymore, whether that's something like the Wolf's Gravestone, or the Luxurious Sea Lord, or the Prototype Archaic, something that is damage focused. Her talents, you want to level her skill and burst, and you can you completely time, ignore her auto ready. attacks, as her auto attacks are very slow and you don't want to use them or Beto generally as a carry. For her artifact set, a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate is really really good on her, but if you don't want to run that or don't have any extra to farm, you could always get by with 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Noblesse, any combination of those will be fine, though I would recommend building her eventually towards the 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate. For Headpiece, you want to run her with Crit Rate or Damage, Goblet, you want to run Electro Damage Percent, and Sands, either Attack Percent or Energy Recharge if you need a bit more, due to having not enough Energy Recharge on your substats. Zhangling! Zhangling is yet another very strong sub DPS that, you guessed it, wants a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, and so you build her very much in the same way. Give her a high damaging weapon, or you can give her the Catch, which, a, which is a free 4-star weapon obtainable in Inazuma through fishing. It's incredibly good on her and Raiden as well. So if you're not going to give the catch to Raiden because you don't have her, give it to Zhongling because Zhongling will make great use out of it. However, she can also make great use out of a weapon like the Favonius Lance or the Dragon's Mane as well. For her talents, it's all about the Pyronado. Level her elemental burst first, then level her elemental skill, and you can level her normal attacks if you want to as well. If you plan to use her as a DPS, especially early game, she's pretty good. For her artifact set, 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate all the way. She is very, very energy hungry. Goba has pretty inconsistent Pyro Particle generation, so more energy recharge and more damage at the same time is very good for her. But you can also run her with a 2-piece Witch, 2-piece Emblem, and 2-piece Noblesse. Any combination thereof is also fine. For her artifacts, you want to focus on the headpiece as crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, pyro damage on the goblet, and energy recharge on the sands, unless you have about 220% or more energy recharge, and then you could give her an attack percent sands as well. And if you have plenty of energy recharge and plenty of attack percent, you can actually switch off of the attack percent and give her an elemental mastery sands, which is also very good for her, though that kind of depends on your overall substats and you can kind of play around and see which one does more damage. Generally, an Elemental Mastery Sands will do a little bit more damage than an Attack Percent Sands, but it is all dependent on your substats, and Elemental Mastery Sands can be a little bit harder to get. Razor. Razor is a hyper carry that focuses on physical damage, very similar to Eula, but unlike Eula, he wants to stay on the field as much as possible. So you want to build him with lots of physical damage, 
attack percents, crit rate, and crit damage. For his weapon, you could use the Snowtomb Star Silver, though he ascends with physical damage so you might actually do better with something like the Prototype Archaic for the attack percent. He also does incredibly well with the Battle Pass weapon, and most 5 star weapons as well. For his talents, you want to focus on his normal attack and elemental burst first, and then level his elemental skill. For the artifact sets, either a 4-piece Pale Flame, or 2-piece Bloodstained, 2-piece Pale Flame will work well, or any combination of Bloodstained and Pale Flame for the physical damage, and Gladiators will work well on him too. He also does very well with a 4-piece Gladiator set, so he's got a lot of options. For the headpiece, you want to focus on crit rate or crit damage, Goblet you want to focus on physical damage percent, and Sand you want to focus on attack percent. He needs barely any energy recharge as he generates a lot for himself, so just focus on as many offensive stats as you can that are not elemental mastery. Barbara! Barbara's very good early game. Unfortunately, she can't make use of the Ocean Hued Clam set very well, so unfortunately she's kind of fallen out of favor and not like those other healers. However, Barbara can still be useful in a fairly uh, good amount of situations, but mostly she's just going to be your general healer for the early game. For weapons, I would give her a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer so she can buff whoever she switches into. You don't really need to use a prototype Amber on her unless you want to use it for someone else down the line because she already does enough healing for when you'll be using her. For her talent, you want to level her skill and burst. Don't bother leveling her auto attacks. People have DPS Barber showcases, but they're honestly a giant meme, so don't fall trapped to that. For her artifact set, I think a 4-piece Noblesse is probably the best for her, though you can run an Ocean Hued Clam on her, it just won't be doing as much damage as it would on Kokomi or Chi Chi. For the headpiece, HP% percent is fine, Goblet HP% percent is fine, Sands probably Energy Recharge or HP% percent, just to make sure she heals more. Either one of those is fine, but just know that Barbara is basically a HP% percent scaling healer, and that's kind of how you want to build her. Lisa! Lisa functions best as a sub DPS and can run a few different options, but generally you want to run her with a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers to buff the rest of your teammate when you switch out of her. For her talents, you want to focus on her elemental burst and then her elemental skill. Don't need to level up her auto attacks. For the artifact set, you could run her on a 4 piece emblem, 4 piece noblesse oblige. Or you could run her with the Thundering Fury set, 2-piece with 2-piece Noblesse, 2-piece Emblem, or any sort of mix and match thereafter. You can focus on Crit Rate, Crit Damage, or Elemental Mastery with her. She is able to utilize all of those fairly well. For her headpiece, she wants Crit Rate or Damage, Electro Percent Damage on the Goblet, and either Energy Recharge or Attack Percent on the Sands. Just whichever one you need more of. Finally, Kaya. Kaya can be run as a physical DPS or as a cryo main or sub DPS. I'll focus on the cryo DPS, but just know that if you want to run in physical, just go with the physical artifact and a physical damage goblet. So Kaya normally would run him with the four piece blizzard strayer with a weapon that either deals a lot of damage because of its high base attack or one that helps give your team energy like the Favonius sword. For his talents, you want to level his burst and then skill if you're planning to use him as a sub DPS. If you want to use him as a main DPS, level his normal attacks, then his burst, then his skill. For the artifact sets, run him on a four piece Blizzard Strayer to give him the immense crit rate. And then for his artifacts main stats, you want a crit damage circlet, a cryo damage goblet, and an attack percent sands. If you want to run physical Kaya, he's actually very free to play friendly because you get the prototype Roncor for free, which is a 4 star weapon with physical damage. You can give that to him, give him either 4 piece Blizzard Strayer for the massive amount of crit damage, which again is probably your best bet, but you could run him with Pale Flame or with Bloodstain for the extra physical damage. Though personally if I was running physical Kaya, I'd still do the Blizzard Strayer just for the extra crit, it's really really helpful. And last but certainly not least, Amber. Amber can be built a couple different ways. 
You can build Amber as an EM support reaction for a character like Hu Tao, or you can build her as a charge attack carry. Either one works, but generally you want to focus on maxing out her pyro damage. So if you want to build Amber, either give her the Favonius Warbow for more energy for your team, something like Elegy of the End actually works really well for her, and those are kind of your main options. She can also run the Alley Hunter, that's a decent bow on her too, but generally you want to focus on giving your team energy. And of course if you really really love Amber, and you have an Amos bow, that'll work really well on her too. For her talents, if you're using her as a carry, focus on her auto attack, burst, and then skill because you want the charge attack damage. If you're using her in a role just for someone like Hu Tao, where you want to apply lots of pyro, focus on her burst, then her elemental skill, and then you could ignore leveling up her auto attacks. For her artifact set, a four piece wander is great for her for the charge attack build, but it's also a pretty decent choice to use a two or four piece wander for her elemental build to give her more elemental mastery. As a sub DPS, you want to focus on things like pyro damage and attack, so you could run two piece witch with two piece wanderers, two piece noblesse, two piece emblem, any of those are fine. For the headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, goblets, you want to run pyro damage, and the sands, you want to run attack percent. And with that, those are all the characters. Thanks so much everyone for watching. If you have another build suggestion, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I have a lot of unique builds that I personally run, like my Thundering Fury Bennett, which I absolutely love. And so if you have one that you want to go over in here, make sure to tell everyone in the comments. Thanks so much, and until next time, take care friends. Can't wait to see you soon.